Let's take our Bibles and go to the book of Genesis, chapter 37, as we kick off this family series entitled Family Games. And I want to talk to you today about the game of life. How many of you ever remember playing that game? Yeah. And uh, I, want to, I want to teach you how you can win the game of life. Because as a believer, you're not called to just play the game but never win. We win because of Jesus. Amen? And as we get into this this morning for just a few minutes, I, I want you to go into this series committed to this, that you will not just be a, do, a hearer of this word, but I'm asking you to be a doer of this word. Amen? Amen? The problem with most Christians isn't that they don't know what to do. The problem is they don't do what they know to do. Amen? And I'm going to drop some truth bombs on you. Amen? You need to write them down. You need to go back and study them. God is setting the table. He is giving us the tools to be able to win at this game, no matter if we're 8 years old or 88 years old, God's given us the tools to be able to win this thing. Amen? And I want us to be able to do it, no matter if you've come from a dysfunctional family, no matter if you're in a dysfunctional family right now, no matter what your background, culture, how you were raised, how you've raised your kids, whatever, that one of the things we learned at, at the conference this weekend is that we are called as believers in our marriages and in our homes. It can be more than this, but these two things for sure. One, to raise godly children and grandchildren. Amen. Okay? So if you're a parent today, understand that is your job. It's not the school's job. It's really not the church's job, but we'll help you. It is your job to raise godly kids, and for us, those of us that are grandparents, to help where we can to raise godly grandchildren. The second thing that we learned was that we are called as families to expand the kingdom of God. It is our job as a church, as a church family, to expand the kingdom of God. This is not supposed to be kept to ourselves. Amen? Amen? Take the cards and go invite somebody. Amen. Go expand the kingdom of God. Invite more youth on Thursday nights. Amen. Get kids here. Expand the kingdom. And however that plays out, and it's going to play out differently for everybody, and I get that. And my hope is, is that uh, through this, not only am I going to, to preach it, I'm going to try to teach uh, more, and, and we got a new screen up here that uh, we're, we're going to use and, and help you uh, as well there. So I, I want to just share some things. And to kick it off, let's go to Genesis 37 and verse 12. You know the story. Joseph has dreamed a dream that he was going to rule over his brothers and over his family. And he goes and he tells the brothers how great he's going to be. How many of you know in your family that would get you beat up as well? <laughs> Right? Go tell your brothers. I mean, try it today. I mean, you're with family today. You're like, well, I'm 40. Well, go tell your 42-year-old brother that one day he's going to serve you. Okay? There'll be a fist fight out in the yard. It'll be interesting to see how that all works. But that's what Joseph goes and does, and he tells them. And, and because he was daddy's favorite, they hated him even more because of his dream. What does that sound like? What kid president just told us that sometimes when you have a dream, people are going to hate you. Not everybody has to agree with your dream. Right? No, not everybody has to agree. <clears throat> and I'm talking about when you do it orally and you do it right and all of those things, but not everybody's going to agree with your dream. That's not a prerequisite to your dream coming to pass. Amen? Amen. So in verse 12 it says, the brothers went to feed their father's flock and Israel said, to Joseph, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. 
So he said to him, here, here I am. And he said to him, go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring me back word. So he sent him out. Verse 15, now a certain man found him, and there he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, Who, what are you seeking? And he said, I'm seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, they have departed from here, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him, now here comes the little favorite kid of dad out into the field with no indication that they're going to be mad at him. And when they came afar off, even before he came near him, they conspired. There are people that might conspire to kill your dream against him to kill him. Why did they hate him? Because he thought at a different level than what the rest of them thought. And so you've got to just recognize that, that there are people that aren't going to like what you stand for, but that's okay. And they said to one another, look, this dreamer cometh. Come now and let us kill him and cast him into the pit, but will lie and tell dad some wild beast had devoured him we shall see what will become of his dreams. Martin Luther King proves you can kill the man and not kill the dream. Amen. Your family might have had a dream. I had a dad. I have a dad that had that's had dreams. I've had grandparents and grandfathers and grandmothers, and, and they died without the fulfillment of it. But what I want to say to you is, it's very possible that the thing that your family was destined to fulfill maybe a grandfather or a great-grandfather and they never did it, that dream can still be alive in you. Just because it didn't happen for them doesn't mean that that family destiny, that family dynasty that was supposed to be established and it looked like it didn't happen, maybe God is reviving that thing in you and you are the generation that is going to see it come to pass. Why is it so vital that we are multi-generational? Because I need a generation coming after me that is going to stand on my shoulders and see farther and do more and carry out the dreams that God has placed in this house and in my family and in your family to carry it out greater and bigger and better and stronger than we ever have. Yes. Amen? Yes. That's why we don't fight that. So let me share a couple of thoughts with you. If you're going to win at the game of life, let me just, let me just walk you through a couple of things that I think will help you. And number one, if you're going to win in the game of life, here's what you need to know. There are rules in the game of life. Amen? I brought the rule sheet with me to the board game life. You need, if you're going to be able to win, you need to know what the rules are in the game of life. Amen? And you can read through this, and it talks about, you know, how you got to take turns and you got to spin the wheel and you got to, uh, you can start a career, you can draw this card, you can do that. Well, what if you decide, I don't want to do that? I want to play by my rules. And then everybody around the table says, Well, I'm going to make up my own also. Well, guess what? That doesn't work. You've got to recognize, and young people hear me, it's important that you understand. That there are just certain things that that work whether you want them to work or not. There might be a dress code on your job. We've got a lot of professionals here. We got some nurses and people here, and you have certain scrub outfits that you want that you are required to wear on your job. Well, I don't like wearing scrubs. I don't like it. I want to wear my blue jeans and flip flops. Okay, you can. You just can't do it. On that job. Right? You know? I, I just think that, you know, my boss shouldn't be able to tell me what to wear. If I want to wear my, my pants down around my, you know, knees and all of that. And, and do all that. I, you, you can. Please don't get me wrong. You can. You just can't do it on certain jobs on Wall Street. 
Right? I'm going to work on Wall Street and let my butt hang out all day. You can. You just can't work on the brokerage floor in Wall Street. You understand? That's not good, bad, or indifferent. All I'm saying is that there are certain things that work. Now, the scripture tells us that there are certain rules that we live by. We don't steal. We don't lie. Amen. Amen. Christians don't lie. Maybe I need to stay on that one for a while. Apparently some of you aren't convinced. What was it? The girl said in the middle of the conference that got up there, Chris Kyle's widow got up and said, I got a t-shirt that says I love Jesus, but I cost a little bit. So. <laughs> Some of you are looking to buy that shirt today. Uh, this, this is going to be a fun series. I can feel. We're going to have a good time. We don't get drunk. We don't have sex outside of marriage. Why? Because those are things for our good. We, we choose not to gossip. Those are the things that God has set up for us. We're not talking about unjust laws, and there's plenty of those and things that have to be fought against. Uh, that, that's not the kind of thing that, that we're talking about. What we are talking about is understanding that there are things that will work in your life. Laws to success, laws to life. Understand the law of honor. Understand how that works. Understand uh, the, the law of recognition. Uh, understand the law of faith. Those are just things. There are rules in the game of life. And here's what I believe. Character still matters. Yes, it does. Amen. Yes. Now the world isn't real keen on this anymore, but we are not of this world. Amen. Character still has to matter. The way we choose to live life. Amen. That it, you know, when um, you find something on the street and it doesn't belong to you, you give it back. When uh, they give you too much money at, at the bank, you give it back. You, you're not looking to see what you can get over, you know, on the establishment. You, you're, you, you're just going to live a different life. I believe character matters. Um, and, and, the, and so much of what the world tries to teach us anymore, and, and we've allowed it to creep into the church, and we got to stop that. And we got to say, you know what? We're going to do things right. We're going to do things right and, and do it above and beyond. Um, a guy that I follow on Twitter the other day um, tweeted something about uh, how, and he's, he's a, a big name guy, and he tweeted something about how, you know, that we no longer tip, you know, uh, for good service 15%, it's now 20 He said unless, and, and this, this was said, he said unless the service is really bad, he said, or rude, he said, leave a buck, that'll teach a message. And I, and I tweeted back, and first time I've ever tweeted back at him, I said, you know what? I always want to believe that there is something more to the story than what I know. Because maybe that server that was having a really bad day is a single mom raising three kids, and the doctor just gave her a bad report on one of the kids. And you want me to leave her a buck for giving me bad service. I said, we're better than that. You see, it, it's character still matters. Character still matters. And, and, and I know we've got to be bigger. This is what I'm trying to get us across, that we've got to be better than that. Character matters. A second thing that will help you win at the game of life is this. You are responsible for driving your car. Amen. Right? I went back, well, it's been, you know, 30 years since I probably have played this game. But it has little cars. You probably can't see this, but this is a little car that's in the game of life. For it, And what you do is you start out just you, and then you have to make career choices. You have to decide whether to go to college, whether to start a career, and it takes you on different paths. Here's the thing, Christians, that we have to understand. We have the Holy Spirit. He's our teacher. We have God the Father, God the Son, all of those wonderful things. But the reality is... You sit behind the wheel. It is your decision on whether or not you listen to the Holy Spirit. He's not jumping in the driver's seat to take over and knock you out of the way. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. We learned this weekend the Waze app. 
right? That he'll show you the way to do things. He'll show you the way to go. But you are the one who has to get in the car and drive your little car. You're responsible to do those things. This is key for you to get. You might add a wife. You might add kids. Guess what? You, you, you have them, right? Whether they were accidents, there are no accidental kids. There are accidental parents. But the Bible says, God says, I knew you before I formed you in the womb. So God knew it whether you did or not. Can I get an amen? amen? So you are responsible for your life. And a lot of people in today's world don't want to take responsibility. If I, if my marriage is struggling, maybe you need, and I would need to look in the mirror. Instead of blaming, I'm responsible for this thing. We need a good dose of people taking responsibility for their life. Amen. Amen. You decide. The Holy Spirit will help you, but you decide. You have to have a written plan. You have to know what that is. What is your plan to be a better parent? I don't know. I'm hoping it works out. You're responsible. This one just happens to have a mom and a dad and a boy and a girl in the back seat, little kids. You're responsible for getting them their safety. Amen. It's your job. Put down Facebook and pick up a parenting book. Pick up a marriage book. No marriage is in trouble. Were you here? I don't know. Have you read anything? What's your plan? Martin Luther King, I listened to a speech he gave to Barrett College, and the whole thing, the title of the speech was, What is your blueprint for your life? What are you going to do with this life that you've been given? Do you have a plan for excellence? I just, most people, listen, I, I want to get people from being the average to being the top tier. And when I say that, you know, 1% of people or 2% of people only think this way. I want Trinity to be in that 2%. I want you to go, you know what? I hear what pastor's saying, and I'm going to put down my, my game. I'm going to put down my, my Facebook and my Twitter account for a little while, and I'm going to go read something. I'm going to do something that is going to make not only my life better and help me drive the car, but everybody who's in my little car with me that just fell out. <laughs> You're all falling down. I'm responsible. <laughs> would, you, would you put my little joints here? Come here, come here. Help me, put them back in there. I gotta have them back in there. I'm responsible. <laughs> Because if I can't get my car together, I go get me some help. Yeah, right. And I find somebody who knows how to put my car and get my family. Gets my family back together. Amen. If I can't figure out how to keep it together, let me get Lawrence to tell me something that I need to know. I gotta have a plan. For getting it fixed. You're responsible for doing that. So how do I do that? Well, you got to make making right choices. You got to understand this. Making right choices. Everybody say right choices. Right. Leads to a better life. It's just that simple. You get to choose certain paths. You get to choose college, career. There's some point in the game where you get to choose having a family or taking the risky route. I thought, well, I thought having kids was risky. I thought... But apparently there's something else there. So you have to look in the mirror and be honest with yourself and say, there are some things that I have done that were not right. I didn't handle certain things right. I should have been better at that. And then correct it and move on. Amen? Amen? 
many times, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but wrong choices many times come from a place of selfishness. The reason that I'm messing up my marriage is because I'm selfish. I want what I want. That's the reason for a lot of conflict. That's the reason why a lot of people can't even admit that they've done something wrong. It's a place of selfishness. Because if I surrender to the fact that I was wrong about something, then I have to lay down the fact that I probably am not going to get my way. But you know what? In a relationship, you've got to be honest about those things. And realize that when I don't do those things, when I don't make those right choices, not only am I hurting myself, I'm hurting everybody who's riding along with me. It's one thing if you drive drunk and kill yourself. It's something else when you do it, and I'm using that as a big metaphor, that you're hurting other people by your decisions to gossip, to, to, to lie, to steal, whatever it might be. Family life, you got to make a choice to not hurt your family. you gotta, you got to make a choice to make life good for your family. Man, if, if, there's, if you're the husband in the home, the dad in the home, part of your job is to not only guide them, but let's enjoy the ride. Amen? Let's, life isn't supposed to be miserable and beat down and all that. Sometimes you just need to laugh more. Amen? Can anybody agree to that? Yeah. Some Jimmy Evans said that they lost some laughter in their house. And here's what I want the laughter to come back in your house. During this series, during this family game series, just enjoy life a little more. Laugh a little more. Cut up a little more. Do silly things. Roll around on the floor with your kids. Get, get them on the couch. Do, and, and tackle them and have fun. And, and do the, enjoy life. Amen? Go to the park. Go do fun stuff. Do something outside the normal. Make everybody put their tablet down. Make everybody put their phone down in the house and actually talk to each other at dinner time. Amen. You know where I really believe one of the best training grounds this day is, is the dining room table. I believe you need to have meals together. I know I know schedules are crazy and all that, but at, you know, a couple of times a week, call family dinners. I like what the one guy said at the conference this weekend about how, I think he said once a week, they have this, um, I forget exactly the term he used, but a family dinner, and, and they keep their phones away, and they light a candle there to represent the family, and they talk about, uh, they, he goes around and he tells each kid something good that he sees in them that week. And he's building the family. Make right decisions. Everybody say, make right decisions. Let me tell you a couple more things, and we'll be done. Fourth, failure is not fatal. We've all messed up. Can I get an amen? Yes, We've all had difficulties. We've all had hard times. We've all done things that we, you know, we wish we wouldn't have. But I want to tell you that that failure is not fatal. A quote that Winston Churchill may have said, some people say he didn't, but it's still good. It says, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Success is not fun. You got to get up and do it again tomorrow. If Lisa and I have a great day today, you know what? I got to get up and be a great husband again tomorrow. I don't get to phone it in and go, hey, babe, I was good two weeks ago. Hey, come on, doesn't that give me some credit for Monday? No, I got to get up and I got to do it again. And then Monday passes and I got to get up and do it again on Tuesday. You're like, well, doesn't that get old? Not when you're in relationship with the right people and you're doing the right things. It is, it is a joy. Recognition. Oh. Uh, of what we've done in life that hasn't worked. We've all messed up. And we go, you know what, I'm not going to repeat that. And then the things that haven't worked, make sure your kids aren't repeating the same thing that you did. Break that generational curse. It is broken. I believe there's a generational blessing. Amen? Take that personal responsibility for owning it. A lot of people don't want to own what they did. It's, it's crazy in today's world. Nobody wants to own that they messed up. Mess up, repent, get over it, and let's drive on. Amen? That's what we need to do. You can no longer just justify wrong behavior. Fix it. Get the car fixed. Get the car of your family fixed. There's no excuse not to do it anymore. 
Can I get an amen? Amen. And lastly, let me tell you this. <clears throat> Winning the game of life is determined by who, not what. What do I mean? Well, in the rule sheet of the game of life, here's how you win. This is what it says. Once all the players have retired, I don't think that means died. It, once all the players have retired, you reach millionaire states, I think is what it's called again. You get to add up your total value. How do I do that? This is what the game says. Count your cash. Turn over your life tiles, which are money, actually, and you add up those dollars amount. You add the two cash amounts together, the cash plus the life uh, tile value that has money attached to it. You add those up, and here's what it says. The player with the highest total value wins. Let me tell you that is incorrect. The book of Matthew says that our life does not consist of the abundance of our stuff. Amen. You understand what I'm telling you? There's nothing wrong with having stuff, but you don't win. The bump, old bumper sticker that says, he who dies with the most toys wins is incorrect because you don't get to take it with you. You understand what I'm saying? We've got, we've got to keep it, and, and, and as believers, we can. Nothing wrong with those things. I, those things are wonderful. But it's not about what, it's about who. We have to decide that, first of all, we're going to love Jesus. Amen. Secondly, and here's where a lot of people, they, they never get past this. Is you got to love yourself. Amen. you got to know who you are. And when you look in the mirror and you don't love the person that's there, you need to go, you know what, I need to make some corrections. Because that, that person should be lovely. You don't like the way you talk. You don't like your bad attitude. You don't like your temper. You don't like the fact of, of how you treat other people and, and this bitterness and this tone. Some people just have a tone. You know what I'm talking about? Right? And you say, you know what, I really don't like that. Then you have the opportunity to change it. But to do those things, you've got to do it intentionally. You've got to fix yourself before you can fix everybody else. A lot of people want to tell you what's wrong with everybody else. Because you know, I mean, you know, if they just listen to you, you can fix everybody. Right? The truth is we've got to fix ourselves. That there's broken places inside me and broken places inside you. That we have to fix. It isn't determined by what you have. Let me show you a picture of a nice car. It's a two door Bentley convertible. Sweet. That's your car. That's probably yours. I saw it in your driveway. I just took a picture of it. Beautiful car. Several hundred thousand dollars. You know what the problem is? The problem is that car's no fun as is. That's a what? It isn't until I put the who in it. <laughs> that now that's not winning. The world says that's winning. Woo, look at that. If it ain't yours, you ain't winning. And if you're in it by yourself and you don't have friends and a church family and people who love you and you're a good person and, and all of that, if, if you stole a million dollars to go buy that car, you're no good. It's not the what. That doesn't become a joy until you have that. Until you got somebody that loves you. Until you got somebody that's going to help you with, and you're doing life together and you're enjoying life and you're you're beginning to do things that matter. Yes. Amen. I'll never get through the invitation if I leave that picture out. <laughs> Let's stand up here. So here's the deal. How do I win the game of life, Pastor? The Bible says love never fails. 
My plan to win life has to be built around love. I love even when I don't get treated right. Every one of us in here could point to a time that you haven't been treated right. You've had people lie about you. You've had people cheat on you. You've had times in your life where it just seemed like you got knocked down and you wondered, am I really going to get back up? But the Bible says, and this is something we learned over this weekend that we knew, but I, I, I want to conclude with this. That the Bible says, if you want to be great, you want to win, I want to win. That's a, that's a noble thing. I want to win. Because by my winning, I can help a lot of people. I don't, I don't want to be mediocre. I don't want to be average. I don't want to, I, I want, but my purpose in winning has to be different than what the world says. Because the Bible says, he who will be great among you, let him be the servant of all. So pastor, how about winning this game of life? You make a conscientious decision that I'm going to serve. We were challenged in this conference, particularly Friday night, To serve one another in our marriages, but in our families, kids, and teenagers. And there's nothing wrong with teenagers learning how to serve, amen? But they got to learn by example. We got to show them how we do that. And my job is that I serve this woman so much so. That's the way that I can become great by being the servant in my house. I want to challenge you to take on the challenge of being a servant. Not when it's convenient, not when you feel like it, but take the challenge of reaching out and serving in your family and serving the kids and teaching the kids to serve and saying, you know what, not just when I agree with it, not serving, we learn based on, on my thought. Well, I, I think, I, you know, whatever, you know, I, I want to serve her based on what I think she needs. I need to listen to her. And then serve her based on what she said, not on what I think. Amen? You got to do that with your kids. You got to do that across the board. Lord, I want to be great. I want to win. I want to win. How do I do it? Be a servant. I didn't bring it with me, but how many of you remember? It's not about a title. It's about a talent. Oh, I want to be great. I want that title. Great. I want to be. I want, I want that title. Here's how you get it. You pick up a towel. And you go serve. Wow. That's an elder that just kept it with me to remind. Here it is. It's not about. It's not about the title. It's about a towel. Amen? Amen. We got to remember that. That's who we are. We got to remember that we become great when we serve one another. Not people who just look like us. Amen? Amen. You know, we, we got racism in the head of this city. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? How do we do it? Oh, I know. We'll do this. We'll do that. Yeah, that's good. What if we just went and served? What if we all just served? I'm telling you, the enemy doesn't like it when we talk like this. But it doesn't matter. How do we win the game of life? We say, you know what? We're going to serve. Serve our spouses. Serve our families. Take care of business. Amen? It's not about what we have. It's about who we have. Let's pray. Father, In the name of Jesus, I pray for those today that have struggled. With heads bowed, this, this is the way we'll conclude and we'll finish up this way. If you're, if you're standing here right now and you would just be honest and you would say, I feel like I have missed the mark. I feel 
like I have failed in some areas and I'm not where I should be and I'm not winning at this game and I want to turn it around and I'm going to change some things. I'm going to start with the man in the mirror. I'm going to start with me. And if that's you, you'd say, man, I get it. I'm beginning to get it. And out of that, you say, I'm going to become more of a servant. I, and that's, that's my challenge as pastor to you for this week to be a servant. I mean, over the top, crazy servant, radical servant, crazy for your family servant. Don't make any of it about you. Serve one another this week. Get outside your family, serve another family, help somebody. And watch what God will do this week. If that's you, you say, you know what, I can do that. I've messed up, but I'm getting it on track. Now, would you just lift your hand? Let me pray for you. Hands all across this place. Father, you know everybody's got a different story. We've all had failures, but we say today they are not fatal. The enemy did not win. He may have knocked us down for a while, but today we get back up. And Lord, I thank you that this life isn't about what we have, but it's who we have. That we have relationships and and. Maybe you're married, maybe you're not. But if you're not, there's friendships and right relationships and church family and your own natural family. And God, we ask you to bring healing to all of that in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're going to serve. We're going to make that phone call. We're going to make that visit. We're going to reach out. God, this will be a week that it's not about us, but it is about serving one another. And we take a shot at racism in this city. And we take authority over it in the name of Jesus. And we will, we will knock it out by love. We will defeat it by love. We will defeat it by serving. Marriages that are struggling, we, we will see them raised up by love. We will see them raised up. You cannot out -sin God's grace. Heard that this weekend. It's so powerful. <clears throat> Lord, touch hearts today. God, you are doing something deep. You, it, we, we recognize that that law of recognition, we recognize we are in the midst of a move of God that is so powerful and so life changing. We cannot live without it, and we don't have to. Father, we thank you for it. Father, we give you the praise. Pray this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I receive this word today, that spirit of receptivity. I'm learning how to win at the game of life, and I win by serving others in the name of Jesus. This will be my week that I serve more than I ever have. Give me a tender heart. My best days are still ahead of me. My failure has not been fatal. In the name of Jesus, my family will win. I will see victory because I'm a servant. And I give you all the praise.